Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out Android 13 on the Raspberry Pi 4, technically the Pi 400. So let's get started. Now I gotta be honest that I've never actually been too interested in Android on the Raspberry Pi before version 12. And the reason behind that was because before that there was actually no Vulkan drivers. So anything you did was functional at best. You weren't able to get full screen uh, videos to play or even much videos to play or any games to play at all. It was functional at best, you know? And since version 12, the Vulkan drivers had rolled in, it's actually been pretty good. So now we are gonna be testing the latest version, which is Android 13 on the Raspberry Pi 4. And I'm gonna show you guys how to install this and also get G apps working or Google apps working. So. Let's check it out. Now I'm gonna be leaving all the links down in the description below, which is a bunch. I'm gonna show you right here. Uh, I have about five or six links over here just to get the G apps working and also the regular image for the device. So popping over here, which is constakang.com, they have the official image and that's the one you want, the top one right here. Download this and then use your Raspberry Pi imager to select the file and flash it onto your SD card. Now you could use SD card or HD if you wanted to or SSD if you wanted to, either one it does boot from it. The image is all set, but don't pull out the SD card yet because we still have to do some modifications to it. So first thing we're gonna do is go down this list and you could see that all these things are working, which is audio, audio DAC, ethernet, hardware acceleration. See, that's a huge thing. And a bunch of other stuff. What's not working is hardware video decoding or encoding. Experimental at best, you might be able to get it to work. You could enable it and see if it, uh, if it does work or not. But otherwise, uh, hardware video decoding or encoding does have a little bit of an issue. Um, then the other issues are the camcorder, which is the, the one with the ribbon cable that you need for the Raspberry Pi 4. Not need, but use for the Raspberry Pi 4. That doesn't work. Um, SE Linux is in permissive mode. Encrypting user data is not supported. And there's a few more issues that I don't know what they are, but I haven't ran into any issues running it myself. Uh, we have the kernel sources if you're interested in looking at that. And then here are the instructions to do it. What's also cool is that this also provides TWRP and we need that to install G apps. A couple of other things that we need to download is G app Lite, which is this right here. And I think I have it somewhere uh, over here. It brings you to SourceForge and you can just hit download and it'll give you uh, basically Google Play Store. Uh, the device ID program, we need to pre-download this. Uh, you can get it from APK Mira and it'll just give you your device ID because we need that to register your device so Google Play would work. And then this is the link to register your Google apps. Now, this is optional, which is Magic's. Um, if you want more of a uh, root access or able to control your root access or deny root access and all that stuff, you might want to install this. It's optional. If you played around with Android enough, you know what this is and you're going to be able to use it for certain games that say, hey, we detect root on your device and we're not going to let you play the game. You're probably going to need magics to kind of hide the root access and a few other things. But that's optional up to you. Not really need it. I will leave the link down in the description below so you guys could get that. Now. Moving on, what we need to do next is go to Gparted, okay? This is Linux only, so in Windows, I don't know what's a equivalent to Gparted. But what we need to do is head over to the SD card and you're gonna notice that it only created like a four gigabyte partition. And if you don't expand the drive yourself manually, it's gonna be stuck with only four gigs of space. So what we need to do here is unmount this partition, make sure it's unmounted, so it's not mounted right now and we could resize and move and stretch out the partition for the rest of the space. So we have 27 gigs free. Hit the check mark over here, apply, and we should be all done and that will give you the rest of the space for your user data. Now, when we're done with the Gparted, we can now shift this over to uh, our Raspberry Pi and boot from there. But while you're here, um, I found that the easiest method is to get a USB, transfer all the things that you just downloaded, which is the G apps, light, uh, the magic, and the device ID, just so you have a separate SD card or USB with it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna boot from the Raspberry Pi now. So give me a sec. All right, so the first time it boots up, it does take a while. Uh, normally it wouldn't take two minutes or three minutes to boot up. It, it, uh, actually, it's under a minute to boot up. But since it's the first time, it creates all the folder structures and everything it needs in user data, and it does take a while. 
All right, so here we are on the main desktop and this is as clean as it can be. There's no programs installed. There's like nothing here, but we're not worried about this yet because we need to install G apps. But first I'm gonna go through some of the settings here. So if I go over to settings, if you scroll down a bit, there's gonna be about tablet. And here you have some information, Raspberry Pi, IME. There's no IP address because I didn't hook it up to Wi-Fi yet. And all the stuff that you need to know on the about. What's interesting is if you head over to system, you have your Raspberry Pi settings. From here, you actually have reboot to recovery, which we need to do. So check this off for the first time. And also the audio port. Since I am using a Pi 400, I don't have a 3.5 millimeter jack. So I'm gonna be using a HDMI zero device, which is the most furthest port to the right on this one. Uh, display rotation, I don't need because I'm just, it's fine on this monitor. And you have a few other things like the power button, volume button, um, other stuff. Now, another thing you wanna change is your CPU frequency. Now the Raspberry Pi 400 and the newer Raspberry Pi 4s all are clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. This will force it to 1.5, actually essentially slowing down the device. So you could either set it back to 1.8 or 2000. Now, on demand is also up to you. I would leave it on performance because this is actually gonna be plugged in all the time when I'm using it. So I'll just leave it at the high clock frequency. And you could also enable all the features like SSH, VNC, and this is the experimental hardware video decoding. Uh, you could play around with this. You'll just get glitchy graphics if something doesn't work properly. Um, and then you could go in and disable it. But anytime you try change a setting from here, you will need to reboot the device. So that is all it. If you wanna to connect to the internet, you can. You could just connect to your Wi-Fi over here. Bluetooth does work. I haven't tried it yet, but I, uh, I read that Bluetooth does work. And also checking your storage. I do have two point 26.84 gigs free. That's because I expanded the drive. Now that everything's in place, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot it. So I'm gonna go here, power, restart. It's gonna bring me to the TWRP, TRWP or TWRP, I don't remember, but one of those. And in here, we're gonna install G apps, which will give us Google Play Store access. Okay, there you go, team win. Yeah, TWRP, team win. RP recovery project. So in here we could actually, I think I have to mount it. Oh, it is mounted already. Good. So the USB is mounted because I have it plugged in install. And then you just have to go over to the SD card. The mouse wheel doesn't work here. My USB, because I don't need SD card, I need USB. So where would that be? Okay. So here we go. USB. And I have a couple of things over here. Uh, first thing we need to do is install G apps arm 64, which is the link I told you to do. We're gonna swipe that. This takes about two minutes. And once you're done with this, you have to do a factory reset. All right, there we go. But don't reboot yet. Just hit the home button, go back to wipe. And right here, swipe for factory reset, which we will do. And then now you can reboot the system. But if you wanna install magics, you go in here and this is where you can install your magics right now. Uh, at the point right now, I'm not gonna add more to the mix. We could just do that a little bit later. So we're gonna reboot and we're gonna go right back into system. Now, again, this might take a couple of minutes to boot up because it's like a fresh restart, just like before. All right, so now that it booted into the desktop again, which again, took like a couple of minutes, we now have the Play Store icon. Here's the downside. I'm gonna go into the Play Store and I'm gonna try to sign in, but it's actually gonna kick me out and saying like, oh, well, one, I don't have network access, so let me get that working. Okay, there you go, internet's working. So to get back into that, I'm gonna go to the Play Store, try to sign in, and here's the problem. It's actually gonna say um, it's not authorized to do it because it's protected or something and you need to register the device. Okay, here you go. The device is not certified to run Google Apps or Google Services, contact the manufacturer, and here's the link, which we're actually gonna be using in a second. But first, what we need to do is get the Android ID or the GF, GSF ID. So to do that, remember that program I had you download earlier called Device ID? We're gonna install that right now. So I'm gonna go into USB devices. Uh, where is it? It is com. This one. Continue to install. I'm gonna hit install. For now, it's gonna ask me for some weird permissions to install. I am gonna allow it right here. See, notifications. I'm gonna uninstall this application soon anyway, so I'm just gonna let this continue. Hit okay. 
And this is what you need, the Google Service Framework ID. So this number right here. So what I ended up doing was just taking a picture of it because I'm sharing only one monitor. And then I would take this ID and insert it into um, the Android authorized device platform. So grab this, save it somewhere and pop over to my desktop. And on the desktop, we're gonna go to that link, which is Google Android Uncertified. And in here, this is where you type in that GSF number. So that number that you got earlier, which starts with a three and then whatever that I got, that's where you would type that random number here and then you just register. Now I actually have two devices registered. One is actually to this device right here, the Pi 400. And the other one is actually to my phone because I'm using a custom ROM here and I need the Play Store to work. So I know that this method does work perfectly. So once you hit register, it's gonna register down here. It will take it's only about five to 10 minutes for it to kick in. If this is the first time you're ever doing it, it might take up to 24 hours because that's what happened to my phone. The first time I ever registered this device, it took 24 hours, I think maybe less and then it finally worked and then my Play Store was working. So it does take a little bit of time for the first time. The second time I did it, it was almost instant. It was like 10 minutes and I was able to get right into my Google Play. Now that everything is registered, so say you did the whole method and you got the registered and everything is working, you could pop back into your Android and remember to reboot it. It's not gonna work on this same install. You need to reboot it and then re-enter the um, App Store. So I'm gonna do that right now, okay? Now that we're booted back in, popping into the Google Play Store, you can now sign in and everything should work. So right now I'm already signed in, I got everything working, and you could go through a lot of the apps. The Play Store works perfectly fine, you can install anything you want, Google Play Service is working. One thing you need to notice is if I type in Netflix, I'm just gonna show you this now, Netflix is actually not on this list yet. Netflix and a few other application streaming services will take a little bit longer to register, and sometimes you might actually need to use magic to hide the root access from your Google Play. So right now I'm not too worried about Netflix. You could get this working. I got it working on my phone and all I needed to do was just wait for it. I don't think I ever did the magic on my phone to get the Netflix working, but I could be wrong on this. I haven't done it in quite some time. So um, if you are interested in Android or anything Android, head over to my Discord channel. There's a bunch of people who know a lot more than I do on modifying this access to get everything working. But for now, everything does install. Now I do have a few apps installed in here. Uh, going first is the Ada64. And you can see it's Raspberry Pi, uh, four gigs of RAM, and all the stuff that you need. The sensors do work. Supposedly, like you're able to get the thermals and everything. So 49.7. Um, that's much about it from Ada64. There's not much I need to share on here. Uh, I did get a game to play on here. So I got Desposito. Well, this game is actually really fun. I forgot what the name of it is. It's actually really fun. You're an AI race that took over humans and you need to generate power. So basically Matrix. And it's a very simple game, but it's also very hard. It's super simple to get into, very hard to play through. I can't even beat the first day. Uh, well, I could beat the first day, but I'm, I usually get stuck on the eighth day. Uh, for this, I just hit next, and you basically could, you know, drop humans into here and drop humans into here to reproduce. Uh, they also need to create food, so you need to drop a human here to create food. And you just need to keep your energy bar up. But this is basically the game. You know, it, it's pretty fun, but it works. That's, that's what I'm just trying to show. It does work with games. I'm gonna quit this game. Uh, pop over into YouTube because I downloaded that from the Play Store. Uh, see, I actually have my video right here. So let's pop into that. It might show an ad, it will. I hate that now it's like one of two. It's so many ads and I don't, it's, it's a lot. So technically you could have just gave me a 10 second ad instead of two, five, whatever. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be going through the 20 so here we are. I currently have on my Pi hosted server. So let's I can full screen this. Uh, it's actually running on low settings. So what I could do is now, pop here into here, go into gear or cogwheel, change it over to higher picture quality. 
Now, so and far, give it a I'm second. There you go. It just changed it over and to 1080, or maybe 720. On and then I can make it bigger. So it's ridiculous, like how many yeah. could fit in here. So everything works. I go some if I go back to say another sold, program, how much files, it's taken, that will minimize the, the bottom right, and, and the video would so be right there. Know where we stand right now with just 20. I think I have maybe one or two. No, nope, that's it. I did install Chrome. If anyone's interested, you could get your browser working, but ultimately and that is it getting android 13 working on the raspberry pi 400 or the raspberry pi 4 which works really really well as well as hardware acceleration for gaming and stuff and i also got g apps working or google play store working so you can install standard apps that you would normally do with your phone or tablet or anything you want and it's very very impressive Anyway, that is it for me, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up on my Discord or down in the comments below. Again, all the links will be linked down in the description as well. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as same my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.